Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be comparing the Kat Von D Lolita palette to the Urban Decay Naked Cherry palette. As you gorgeous people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away, because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh, damn, it's too bad this isn't tea, because honey, we are about to spill it. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. I fucking hate when people say, oh, give me the tea. Surely I'm not the only one who thinks that. Anyway, Kat Von D Beauty came out with a brand new palette, and the first thing people said was, oh my god, it looks like the Naked Cherry palette. Motherfucker, is that foundation on me? Good god. I'll just ignore that. I didn't even know that Kat Von D was coming out with another palette, but people tagged the shit out of me and said, please compare this to the Naked Cherry. I personally like Kat Von D products. I really like Urban Decay products. I really didn't like this palette. And I want to see if this one is any better. I haven't taken a look at this, but apparently from the pictures online, they look exactly the same. And you know what? It seems like a lot of companies are finally listening to consumers and releasing exactly what the world needs. Red palettes. Mm, mm-hmm. I swear to fucking god, if another major brand releases a red tone palette within the next six months, I'm retiring and becoming a proctologist. Because if brands are shoving these red tone palettes up our asses, I may as well hop in on the fun too. Oh, I'm such a bitch. Anyways, not that I have a say in anything in the makeup world, but please, for fuck's sake, give us a color other than red. I know a few brands out there have been brave and given us bold color, but honey, I want more. Alright, enough of that bullfuckery. I am on the Sephora website. This Kat Von D palette retails for $39, and this Urban Decay palette retails for $49. At the checkout, Kat Von D's palette is $10 cheaper, but over all you're actually paying more per shadow with this than you are with this. However, if I remember correctly, half of these shadows look the exact same and one of them doesn't even work. No idea how these perform, but I just remember not really thinking this palette was worth the price. The ratings are pretty much the exact same. They both have four and a half out of five stars. I believe they're both vegan and cruelty free. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you now, it's not like I'm really doing a dupe that video because they're so similar in cost. It's not like one of these is $5 and one is 50. I guess this video is geared more towards quality and which brand you wanna support. Just for shits and to compare, I am gonna read one low and one high review for each palette. For the Kat Von D palette, the lowest review says I was super excited to buy this, but I'm returning it. The shades are extremely muddy and there's a lot of fallout. They have brown eyes and the shades end up making their eyes look flat. Once blended out, everything looks the same. The darker shades were very patchy and had a difficult time blending them in the crease. Hold the fuck up. Honestly, that sounds exactly the same as the issues that I had with this palette. Fuck me. But we'll get into that a little bit later. The highest review says Kat's best ever. So pigmented, so versatile, absolutely beautiful. They also own the Urban Decay Cherry palette, and both palettes are amazing. Highly recommend this palette to everyone. They just received theirs today. Looking at the lowest rating for this, they say it returned it, it's patchy, and there's so much fallout. It sounds very similar to the other lower rating. Okay, I'm skipping that review because all this person did was swatch it, and we all know that swatching is not an accurate way of determining whether a shadow is good. So this next one says, perfect palette for fall. The colors are all gorgeous, and when used with eyeshadow primer, there is no fallout. Beautiful colors and wonderful pigment. And even though I didn't really care for this, I'm very happy to see that people are loving this. But what I didn't like about this palette, and it sounds like what people don't like about Kat's palette, is the fact that you could probably take out every other color in here and still get the same amount of looks. And the only color that makes me so fucking wet in here, which is this one right on the end, does not even work. It is just so patchy and not pretty looking, and it was kind of the same for this red one here too. I think it's devilish. Like, singularly, these colors all look super pretty, but in a palette, it just doesn't do anything for me. So, let's go ahead and open up this Kat Von D palette. <gasps> eh? Oh, hmm. Okay, so first thing that I noticed is that these two colors are very, very similar. Like on camera, this one looks a bit darker, but in person, they almost look the exact same. And overall, this palette kind of reads more purple than red to me. And for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's put these up next to each other. I can see how people thought they were similar, but they're definitely not the same. I totally wish that this was combined with this. Like, that would make a beautiful fucking baby. Maybe, like, take out this color and replace it with that one. And maybe that one with that one. Oh shit, and these are all matte too, aren't they? I just realized. I don't know because I do like this. It's just this color that's really throwing me off. Like it's making the palette look kind of dusty. And I thought this palette looked super dusty, but when comparing them, this one is actually kind of vibrant. But right off the bat, are they the exact same? No. However, I have a feeling that the looks we'll create are gonna be very similar. Ugh, but I just keep looking at this and switching it around in my mind. And I know I already said this, but together these would be so beautiful. Just like pick from here and pull from there and then it'd be fucking magic. But normally I do swatches for the entire palette, but I think we're actually gonna do some live swatches. And so I am very excited to swatch and do a look with these bitches. You guys know the song. Are you ready? Swatching time. <laughs>
My god, I spit all over these. Jeez. Alright, first up, I honestly don't know because all of Kat's light shades don't look anything like the Naked Cherry shades. Let me see, maybe if I look in the monitor? I guess let's start with these two light shades. Ooh, that is very, very soft feeling. And here we have the Naked Cherry, and then here we have Kat's. Clearly, the colors are very, very different. Kat's is obviously a lavender, and the other one is more of a cream. Let's see, what other shades are similar? Maybe these two? Kat's Con Amor and Devilish. Oh yeah, those look nothing alike when swatched. Here's Kat Von D. Oh my god, that is beautiful. And the Urban Decay one, which is a little bit splotchy. Can I rub that around a little bit? Eh. I guess on camera they're kind of the same. The Urban Decay one is definitely a bit more red, while the Kat Von D one is more brown. I have no idea how that is because it's super red in the pan. And they both did stain my skin a little bit, so that's fun. Let's try, oh my god, I can't read that writing. This shade right here, that really pretty berry to Bing. Oh, once again, very, very soft, super pigmented. Same for the Urban Decay one. Here is Kat Von D's. Oh my god, that's pretty. And then Urban Decay's. And this is over a primer. They both honestly aren't that bad, but this one is much less pigmented. Kat Von D's is just like, holy shit, pigmented. But I also noticed that the swatch is way deeper than how it looks in the pan. I don't know if that's because of the primer or what. But like next to each other on my lap, they do look very, very similar. But on the hand, that shit is nowhere near the same. Honestly, I don't even know what else to compare here. Maybe Lolita with Juicy. Here we have Lolita. Very nice. And here we have Juicy. Ooh, I really like that one. They're both totally fucking different. Both beautiful colors, but not at all the same. Swipe these ones off too. You know, honestly, you guys, I'm just gonna call it right now. No, these are not the same. The Kat Von D shadows are way more pigmented than the Urban Decay ones. No shade towards Urban Decay, but I'm just telling you how it is. Because I've swatched this little bitch like a million times, I do just want to go and feel the rest of these. That one. Ooh, that feels really good too. Eh? There's that one. I don't remember its name. I don't know that name either, or that one. I don't remember any of these names. Oh, that last one. Ooh, no? Okay. All right, well, those are swatched. Honestly, they're not that bad, but truthfully, they're not the best. But still, I think this swatch leaps better than how this one did. This is like a two-inch penis, and this is like a ten-inch penis. I'm not here to judge, but which would you rather have? All right, well, let's go ahead and pop into a look and compare, shall we? Oh my god, that black stained my hand. For foundation, I'm going in with Dior's Backstage in the shade 2.5. For concealer, let's go in with some Tarte Shape Tape in the shade light. And the reviews for both palettes did say there was some fallout, so I'm just gonna place some translucent setting powder underneath my eyes to catch that fallout. And to prime my eyes, of course, I'm going in with my NYX shadow base. Then I'm gonna go ahead and set that primer into place, and I think I'll do Kat Von D on this side and Urban Decay on this side. So with this beautiful light lavender shade, I'm gonna dip a fluffy brush into there and set it all over the eye from lid to brow. I don't wanna, like, pack this on, but I do wanna have a nice light base to start off with. Ooh, that is very, very pretty. I like that. But it is getting darker, so know that if you're gonna use this with a primer, it's gonna get like five shades deeper. Okay, maybe not five, but it's not gonna stay looking like how it is in the pan. But there we have the first shadow. Very, very pretty, and I am gonna use the same brush, so I'm gonna color switch it. That is a clean and fresh brush, so I'm gonna dip into Hot Pot, and we'll do the same on this side. Place it from lid to brow and blend upwards. But there we have both of them on. Honestly, I like the way Cat's looks better, but that's just personal preference. To me, because the color changed a little bit, it honestly looks like a full look. Like, I would be fine doing a wing, some mascara, and calling it a day. But with the Urban the K1 because it is so light and I'm spreading it all over my eye. It just kind of took a bit of the dimension away. So do they look the same? I don't think so. What do you think? Although if I were out in public and just had this on, I really don't think anybody would notice that the eyes are different. So let's keep going. Next. Oh, fuck me. I really don't know because this palette is seriously kind of orange and this one is definitely more purple. I guess let's go ahead and try these two berry tones. Oh, I don't know. On a new clean fluffy brush, I'm going to dip into, oh, I can't read that. This one right here. And I'm going to start by tapping it right here on the outer corner. Corner. Let's tap it on like that. Ooh, that's a really pretty color. And I'm just gonna kind of work it around right there. I can't tell. I don't think it looks patchy. I don't know. What do you think? From where I'm looking, it looks pretty damn good. So in little circular motions, I'm just gonna keep patting this in. Oh my god, that blends out so easily. And then once most of it's off my brush, I'm just gonna go back and forth along the crease line. There we go. Just like that. Eh? And let's dip into Bing. Even though I'm pretty sure this one is quite a bit lighter. Maybe if I combine Bing with Devilish? Try that one right there. No, it's not the same, but it is very, very pretty. And honestly, it's performing pretty 
much the exact same as how cats did, just blending out super duper easily. And I don't know that I necessarily prefer either side. They're both pretty in their own way, but this one is definitely more glam. The colors though are clearly different. So just to get that dark aspect that this side has, I am gonna very lightly dip into privacy, which did not wanna work that great when I played with it before. But to deepen this up, I'm gonna lightly tap it right on the outer corner and kind of blend it in with what I laid down before. I don't think it'll get as deep or saturated as this side, but we can try. All right, I think that's probably as deep as I'll get that side. I don't know. I mean, they're not hugely different. It's just one's red and one's purple. So maybe they are really different. Shit, I don't know. Next, to kind of smoke out in the crease, I really don't have that many options. I guess we'll do Juicy with Lolita. Let's go in with Lolita first on this side. I can't tell. Is that doing anything? Maybe? I don't know. I feel like it blended out to be the same color as what's on the outside. Oh, I'm so confused. Whatever, though. Let's color switch this brush and take Juicy on the other side. Ooh, that color is so freaking pretty. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this because I give this palette so much shit, but I actually like this side better. Although on camera, I like this side better. Oh, God damn. Fuck me with a chocolate bar. I don't even know. Oh, God. I'm so tempted to put Juicy on this side because they'd go together so nicely. I am just gonna put a little bit more privacy though on this side just to deepen it up a bit. Is that kind of getting similar? Ooh. Yes, they are. And though they are starting to look similar, it's not like they're muddying up. Like, I can see the layers between each color. I have no idea if you can on camera, but in person, they both look really pretty. It's just that to get the color of this one shadow, I had to use three of these shadows. Oh shit, I don't know what to do on the lid because that's where I'd normally put a shimmer, but this palette doesn't even have shimmers. Whereas this palette has too many shimmers. I guess let's worry about that a little later and go ahead and dust this powder off and we can tackle the under eye. Okay, so right now with this very simple smokiness that we have going on, they do look very, very similar. Let's go ahead and smoke out this lower bitch. To start, let's go in with, oh, I don't know. I guess let's do Lolita. We'll just take that back and forth all along the lower lash line. And then for the other side, I'm gonna mix Juicy with Bing. Maybe that'll kind of create the same looking shade. Actually, that is really close. The only difference is that this side is really fucking patchy. I'm also gonna smoke out some of this berry shade. And with that, I'm only gonna go about halfway in and kind of do a C motion. Purples are a little bit tricky to work with on camera because in person they look beautifully blended, but then once you see them on the camera, they look splotchy. So I will try my very best to make it look good for you, but please don't judge me. Then for the Urban Decay side, I'm gonna go in with Privacy. Oh my gosh, this one just does not want to lay down. I put primer down there, but the shit won't stick. The hell? Oh, man. Okay, so now that I have both of these on, the only difference that I can see is that in the camera, this side looks splotchy and this side looks blended out. Whereas in person, they both look pretty much the same. Very dark and dramatic. I love it. For shimmer, I don't know what to do because my ass does not like matte looks. So I'm almost tempted to use a third party with this. Oh, it just doesn't look right matte. I feel incomplete. I would say I feel naked, but who the fuck doesn't love that feeling? Okay, just for a little bit of pizzazz, I'm gonna dip into this cover effects palette into the shade Rose Gold. And I'm just gonna place a little bit of it right here on the inner eye. See? doesn't that help so much? And actually it's not even touching the rest of the shadow, so it's perfect. And they look very, very similar, do they not? I dare say they are exactly the same. No, not really. They are a little bit different, but if I were out walking on the street, I don't think people would be able to tell. I'm gonna line the lower waterline with nude liner, and then I always take some black and just run it in between the lashes. And here we are with the final look. My eyelash will not lay down on this side a little bitch. Oh shit, it's coming down on this side too. You know what? It is what it is. From a distance, I think this is kind of Passable. What do you think? Actually, up close it is too. Damn. I'm gonna be honest though, and I don't know how many looks between the two palettes that you could create that are similar. There's only a few shadows that are even close to being similar, and they're really not even that close. But with that being said, when they blend out, they end up looking the exact same. And that was kind of the issue that I was having originally with this palette. Like, no matter what colors I used, it always ended up turning into the same look with the same colors. I don't really know if it's the same with the Kat Von D palette, but I do know that these definitely do change colors when you put them on your eyes. Maybe Maybe it's my primer. I mean, I used two different primers, one on my hand and one on my eye, and they still transformed into a deeper version of these. That's not to say that these palettes aren't pretty in their own little ways or that the looks you'll create from them won't be pretty. I just think that with both palettes, you might be a little bit limited to the number of looks you can create, at least with the Kat Von D palette, because it has no shimmers. With this palette, you can easily slap a shimmer on and call it a different look. But really, with either of these palettes, I think the look is either going to be dark and glam or light and super minimal. I don't really think there's that much of an in-between here. I am going to go ahead and do a wear time test, then I'll give you my final thoughts, so I will see you in just a second. And we are back. We did just hit about five-ish hours. It's almost midnight and I have to take this shit off. But I actually think they both still look pretty much the exact same. If they're fading, they're both fading gracefully. It doesn't really look like any pigment has fallen down underneath my eyes. They both look great. Hold on, I need some more lip gloss. I went in every room in my house under different lighting and looked at this, and I really can't tell the difference between the looks. I don't know if it's because they're muddy, if 
the colors are similar or what? But do I think these palettes are the same? Online, yes, but in person, no. Yes, I was able to use both palettes and create a similar look, but are these the exact same? Fuck no. For quality, I think Kat Von D totally wins. For color, I really like both of them because they are so different, but I'm also confused because we did get the same look. I think if this palette had one or two shimmers in it, it would probably win overall, but I don't know because now that I used this palette again, I do kind of like it a little bit more. Oh, I don't know. So close, but so different. I think if you already have a shit ton of shimmers and you don't really need more, then go with this palette, but if you want a few extra shimmers, you can definitely get away with this one. I don't really know that I'd recommend one palette over the other because unless you're trying to create this basic smoky eye, you'd probably be able to get different looks with each palette. But to answer that burning question and the reason for this video, are these the same? No. But damn, I do really like this look, which I will admit was much easier using the Kat Von D palette, but still pretty damn easy using this palette. Do I recommend these palettes? Honestly, I still don't know that I recommend this palette. This Kat Von D one is good quality, and if you like the colors, you probably won't be disappointed. So I guess, yes, I do recommend this palette, but there you go. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.